So, you've landed in the back room. But you've been here before. You know what you're doing. And if you don't, well, I'm going to walk you through some of the funniest glitches I've found in this game. Or I've at least learned about. If you crouch, and then use the paper, uncrouch, and click off the paper, you now do not have to press crouch. This is a way you can toggle crouch, and you can even do it while jumping. This door frame, at the end of the level, is very, very weird. You can jump into the ceiling, where you then get soft locked, or you can just run into that corner there, which is also a soft lock. There is many, many different ways you can cheese this level, or I guess this section. You can go onto the T part, <laughs> let yourself fall over, and then you're free to just move around up here. You can just walk along the edge like this. Or, if you're in older versions, you can angle your camera and then abuse the falling to the side tactic like that and just fly across. Or you can jump down, in which case you just go that way to the exit. Almost 100% of the time, there's a flashlight in this room, and this spot behind the door is amazing for hide and seek. Also, because I have my brightness turned way up, you can barely even see what's in this room. So you just take the flashlight, hide behind this door, and no one will ever find you. This keypad can very easily be guessed. And you can just hop outside the elevator. And if you go that way, you can pick up some almond water as well, if you get lucky enough. You can interact with most things through the wall, including these doors. Pretty much any of these cabinets can be jumped on top of by crouch jumping onto the handle and crouch jumping on top. Also, in this room, if you go over here, jump on top of here, you can jump onto the pipes up here. Yeah, that's another hide and seek spot. If you're ever having trouble getting into that back room, just have the entity chase you, and then you just run all the way around. And this can work on both of the entities, regardless of how many people there are as long as you get both of them to notice you. Now you can make it to that back room with zero worry, because the entity is nowhere to be found now. This corner here is very weird, and can do some strange properties, especially if you manage to get up here. You can tell whether or not the elevator is here simply by looking. If you put your uh, graphics on low, and then look through the wall, you can see that there is no elevator there, so therefore it's on a different floor. You can also use this trick to see where the entity is. Just look right here, look around, and there it is. Oh god. The wall looks like this on this side, but like this when you come back in from the hub. You can climb on top of this thing, if you do it right. Like that. Unfortunately, I've never found a way to click on it from here, which would be pretty funny. But yeah, you can stand on it, for some reason. This code can be clicked on anywhere on the screen, regardless of whether or not it's on the dots. If you have your game set to a different language, you just skip the animation to putting in the passcode, which is pretty nice. The entities can be frozen if you do it right. For some reason, these dressers are the pretty much the only things you can't pick up items through, which is weird. You can run behind the entity after it runs by. And for some reason this is the only smiler that isn't invisible, besides the other one at level 5. You don't have to open this box in order for the door to open, you just have to be near it. See? Pretty much everything in this room can be jumped on. If you crouch and then interact with these, and then uninteract, it doesn't save your crouching state like the papers. Actually, most interactables don't save your crouching state, which makes the reasons why paper just do so much weirder. 
you can, in fact, get onto this vending machine. It's just very hard. Going behind these electrical boxes and crouching in this corner is a very good hide-and-seek spot. It is guaranteed to have two flashlights spawn on this shelf. You can also get on top of this shelf. A hound is usually supposed to spawn in this hallway, but it is very easy to just skip past if you open this door and then close it. These pipes might be a soft lock, but we have yet to actually figure out a way to get soft locks in them. The hound in this room is almost a joke because it almost never comes over to this area and will only chase you if it sees you. The hound from the hallway despawns, which means you never have to deal with it again. Which honestly I think is kind of a mistake, because it would be nice to have to deal with it whenever coming back. This hound despawns even if you're in the same room with it, which doesn't make much sense. Sometimes an electrical box can spawn over there, which in my opinion is kind of unfair unless you're playing with someone else. A cable box never spawns in this room and there's always a hound there. It's kind of just a troll room. If you pause the game while dying of sanity, the sound effect of the smilers just loops over and over. The electricity goes through the wall, and can in fact kill you. This railing has a fun mechanic where you slide off of it if you go far enough while crouching. This water jug is one of the few items in the game you cannot jump onto. You can run through these cameras without actually having to worry about the cameras. After going through the vents and resetting the camera, you can actually jump back into them. You can softlock on any level just by using some juice. Reset with juice in your inventory, spam both the button where the juice is and click, and this will happen. And now you're unable to interact with anything. This sink and this door can create some very weird stuff. If you lock your FPS on 30, the moth jelly can just go through the floor. If you put items onto this tray, it'll eventually bring it back up to you. You can get on top of the bed in this room and just float there. You can also get under it from up here. The code to this lock is 1 out of 3, so you can just open it from the very beginning of the level. Unlike the pipes in the other levels, you can jump on top of these. If you jump on top of the chairs and then on top of the tables, you can get up on the tables. You can even pop the balloons from up here. If you pop this balloon up here, you can then run through the party goers at just a specific angle to where you don't die. If you do the soft lock with the liquid pain, all of the animation sound effects will play, but you will never die. And you're now permanently stuck with heart beating. If you stand in between these two chairs and pop this balloon, the party goers are now stuck. If you run through this area just right, the party goers won't kill you. The glitch in the first room also works here. You're unable to go down these slides, which is honestly a disappointment. Some of these corners and pool rooms have some very strange properties. You can skip having to walk along the edge in this room by using this pool floaty. If you do it just right, you can actually get behind the entities. Unfortunately, this isn't that useful because once they reach the end, their level will reset. You can use the glitch to get behind the entities as a way to get pushed out of bounds. Most of the stuff in this level can just be jumped over, so it's kind of just a crouch jumping simulator. This level is actually really easy, considering if you ever get spotted by the entity, you can just run underneath a table. On levels 3 and 5, if you jump into a very specific spot on underneath the stairs, you get softlocked. Using the WASD keys, you can go up the staircase very fast. With perfect bee hopping and using one of the trucks, you can get through this level without the night ever starting. You can jump on top of the buses by jumping on the light and onto the roof. You can jump into the bus by crouch jumping inside. You can go underneath of most houses that are on top of a ledge. You can also enter the bed this way, which also saves you from nighttime. If you jump a very specific way into this corner, you can get soft locked. But sometimes if you uncrouch, it just drops you down. Pushing boxes on 30 FPS can look kind of weird sometimes. It's also much faster. The way this level works is very weird. The door opens, and then the clown disappears. But if either of these are interrupted, then you're softlocked. You can cheese this entire section simply by standing up against this wall. 
using a very well-timed double crouch jump you can get up on top of these tables or by using these chairs you can get on top of here and up here you can also climb up some invisible walls and jump over if you crouch jump onto the edge of this train and then jump you get flung around a little bit it's not really much to say about this level you just do two mazes if you switch in between items real fast it changes colors and you can do it infinitely running up to almost any wall in this entire level lets you see out of bounds doesn't matter where you are you can see out of bounds in some way you can soft lock yourself almost immediately by just pressing this and leaving you don't actually have to cross the bridge to progress you can in fact just go up into that cave one of the easiest ways to beat this level is to sit right here look through the wall and whenever that guy starts moving away you come in here come over here crouch behind this rock and then you just wait a while and now you just run <laughs> And there you go. The code to this locker is the same every time. Square, circle, arrow. If you don't know where to go in this level, just follow the left wall, and it will always bring you to where you need to go. If you somehow manage to get through the gate here, the next area actually isn't loaded. There are many different ways to get out of the fence in this level. And you can get into the fence from every single one of them. You can go up on top of these rocks. If you jump into these windows, you can see inside the house, which isn't really much. There's random stuff out here that you will never see and never interact with. This door is locked, but you can just jump through the windows. In this house, there's a door you can open and close. This house is missing the front of the house from the back side, but obviously, the front of the house is still there. You can see the empty skeleton of this house from the outside. This locked door leads to a single room with a door you can't open and is way too big. If you get the entities here and then close the door, you can then push them outside. And if you lead them a bit away, and then hurry back inside, you can now explore the houses without any worry of the entity. Doors open depending on where you look. So if you open it like this and then open it again through the wall, it spawns over here. And the same thing happens. It depends on whichever way you open the door from. These beds are much easier to get onto than level 5. In this room, if you jump onto this pipe, and then up here and go in this corner, you're soft locked. You can jump through most first story windows, which can make for some pretty funny strats. If you stand in the doorway of this house, he just can't kill you. If you run up against an invisible wall, sometimes the guy will spawn on the other side of the wall, meaning this happens. There's a gap in between the invisible wall here that lets you run over here and then off the face of the map. If you hop up here on this fence and then just keep going around here, you can hop up, hop up here and then just go all the way along the fence all the way to the end. If you jump up here, you can jump up here and get out of bounds. Behind the arcade in level 10, there's this random spot that you can't get through. And that's it. That's all the glitches you can do in the current update that I have found or have found from other people.